In uh, review of what we uh, discussed last time, we're going to take a look at uh, this problem number 25 on page 604, as I mentioned. And the directions here, we're going to go back to the directions in a minute, but uh, last time we learned how to solve <coughs> such a system by using what we call Gaussian elimination. And so let's review that process again. Um, <coughs> if we number these 1, 2, and 3, and what we ultimately want to do here is get ourselves in a position where we can get rid of another variable, like in the number 3, for instance, already has y gone. So if we could take numbers 1 and 2 and combine them and get rid of y, then we would have two equations that have just x and z in them, okay, which would be good because if we have two equations with two variables, then we could either eliminate x or z, get ourselves down to one variable, and then substitute back and find the other two values. So looking at numbers 1 and 2, I have a negative 3y here, and I have a y here. So I would choose to multiply number 2 by 3, and have a 3y here in that position. So if I did that, I'd have, again, number 1 rewritten would be minus 3y plus z equals 1. And I'd have negative 3x plus 3y minus 12z equals negative 9. Okay. So again, I'm just going to take number 2 equation multiply it by 3 on all parts and then I'm going to go ahead and combine those together and I'm going to get uh, negative x y's of course are gone in the z column we'd have minus 11z and then we'd have uh, minus 8 over here and I'm going to call that new equation number 4 okay. so <clears throat> again if we're interested in ultimately solving this we have numbers 3 and 4 now that both have x and z okay. um, as we can see we have in the x column, we have a 3x and we have a negative x. So I'd probably choose to multiply number 4 by 3 also and make it negative 3x <coughs> minus 33z equals negative 24. And then combine that with the number 3 equation. Because that way I can get rid of my x's. And if I do the math on this one, I'm going to have negative 34z over here and negative 22 over here. Okay. And then if I divide those two, I'm going to have 22 over 34, okay. which would ultimately be 11 seventeenths. Okay. And with that said, I could find <coughs> one of the three variables that I need. And once I have that variable, okay, I can go back and I can resubstitute. Okay. And I can put in <coughs> my 11 seventeenths either into I would suggest putting it in number 3 because that one was one of the originals. Okay. So if we go ahead and put that into number 3, we have 3x minus 11 seventeenths equals 2. And if we add 11 seventeenths to both sides, we'd have 2 and 11 seventeenths over here. And if we divide that by 3, you can do it by hand, but if you want to do it uh, quicker, remember uh, a mixed number if you want to do that, 2 and 11 seventeenths divided by 3, remember it's 2 plus 11 seventeenths. If you want to use your graphing calculator, I would put it in like that. Divide that all by 3 and then do math crack. And we get x equals 15 seventeenths. Okay. And finally, if we have x and z, then we can either take number 1 or number 2. And we can put those two into one of those two and solve the equation for y. And then we would have all three of our variables. Okay. So in this particular case, if I put it in number 1, I'd have 2 times 15 seventeenths minus 3y plus 11 seventeenths equals 1. And so if I combine these two, I'd have 30 seventeenths plus 11 seventeenths. That'd be 41 seventeenths minus 3y equals 1. And if I subtract 1 minus 41 seventeenths, I'd have negative 24 seventeenths divided by negative 3. Give me 8 seventeenths. <clears throat> okay. So with that said, my ordered triple then, x is 15 seventeenths, y is 8 seventeenths, and z would be 11 seventeenths. So our claim is that that is the solution to <clears throat> this system. Okay. And just to uh, double check, once again, if we put that into our number one equation, Okay, 
it does work in the number one equation. If we put our 15 17ths, 8 17ths, and 11 17ths in, we do get 1. If we put it into the number two equation, let's see if it works in that one. Hopefully it does. And it does give us negative 3, so that's good. Right? Still not final check, though, because it's got to also work in the third equation as well, the original. So if we do 3 times 15 17ths minus 11 17ths, we do, in fact, get 2. And so it does check on all three. So we know we have the correct answer. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> In this particular case, this one was a little more tedious than the one that we did as an example on our last session, okay, uh, because of the fraction part. Okay. Of course, our gra graphing calculator in our own mind works well, so we should be able to deal with the fractions without too much trouble. Um, but <clears throat> what we're going to look at today is uh, there is another way okay, to solve this, okay, and <clears throat> the way that we're going to do it is primarily with calculator we're using matrices. Okay. So what I want to look at first here is that if we take this original system, we're going to solve it in a different way. Okay, if we take that original system and we just write the coefficients down, okay, and we put them in the order okay, that they're in as we were given them, okay, and we only look at just the number parts only. Okay, because if you notice that most of the work that we did here was just manipulating coefficients here, wasn't it? To be able to get stuff to eliminate. Okay. Well, we can do the same thing here with just if we just look at the coefficients and we don't even use the uh, letters at all. Okay. If I do this, which is take all the coefficients and put them in one matrix, okay, this is what we call an augmented matrix. So this is what we call an augmented matrix. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do with our augmented matrix is we're going to essentially put it into three different parts okay, to get this done. We're going to take it and we're going to put it in terms of the first three lines. Okay. And anytime we have three equations with three variables, we're going to always have a three by three matrix that we're going to call our coefficient matrix. And then we're going to put the three variables in a three by one matrix. We're going to call this the variable matrix. Okay. And we're going to set that equal to one, negative three, two, which is going to be the right side of all three of our equations. And okay, we're going to call that the answer matrix for no lack of a better scientific term for it. So we're going to take that system okay, and we're going to put it into a coefficient matrix, a variable matrix, and an answer, ma answer matrix. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what we want to recognize here, and we may or may not right from the get-go, but the way we had this set up with this matrix times this matrix, is it even possible to multiply this matrix times this matrix? This is a 3 by 3, and this is a 3 by 1. So is it possible to multiply a 3 by 3 times a 3 by 1? Yeah, the two inside <coughs> dimensions would be the same. Okay, and we would get a outside dimensions of 3 by 1. It would give us this 3 by 1, wouldn't it? Okay. So our claim is that this times this equals this. Okay. If that's the case, <coughs> then what I want to do ultimately here is get this by itself. Because okay. I want to figure out what my x, y, and z are. Okay, and if I could get that variable matrix by itself on one side, equaling another 3 by 1 matrix on this side, okay, then the answers that I have over here are going to be the values of x, y, and z that are going to make this true. Because okay? ultimately what I want to figure out is what can I multiply this 3 by 3 matrix, okay, what 3 by 1 matrix can I multiply by it to make that as a result. Fair enough? So that sounds kind of complicated, but here's the good news is the answer is no different than doing this. If I wanted to solve AX equals B, I would divide by A, but instead of dividing, 
because we haven't talked about dividing matrices. Okay, we're going to multiply by 1 over A. Okay, that would get the X long, wouldn't it? True. So what we're going to do here is absolutely nothing different than what we do here. Okay, to get rid of the coefficient matrix, okay, we're going to multiply by its multiplicative inverse because that's what A and 1 over A are to each other. They're multiplicative inverses of each other. Okay, but remember, if we multiply the left side by the multiplicative inverse, we're going to need to multiply the right side by the multiplicative inverse also. Now, one thing I did here on purpose here is I wrote B times 1 over A. Okay, in the scheme of things, when I, we just have numbers, okay, multiplication is commutative, so it's okay to write the 1 over A on this side of it. Okay, but what do we know about matrices? Matrices are not commutative, so therefore we're going to have to do it in the form of 1 over A times B. Because if we were to put a 3 by 3 matrix over here, which is going to be the inverse of the coefficient matrix, that's not going to work to do <coughs> 3 by 1 times 3 by 3. That won't work, will it? Okay? It's going to have to be on the left side of that matrix in order to even do the multiplication. Okay? So what is that going to look like? Well, let's find out. <coughs> what we're going to do, and remember, we, we find 3 by 3 inverses by calculator. We don't find them by hand. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and put in our, our matrix. I'm going to do a 3 by 3. I'm going to put the coefficient matrix. 2, 3, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 4, 3, 0, negative 1. So that's our coefficient matrix. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> put in the B matrix. I'm going to make that a 3 by 1. And I'm going to put my answer matrix in there. Whoops. Didn't do that right. Try that again. So 1, negative 3, and 2. So my answer matrix is going to be in B. Okay, and ultimately what I want to do here, and this is going to be the format, I'm going to write it down on paper first. Okay, we're going to have coefficient matrix, variable matrix, equals answer matrix. Okay, and what we're going to do is multiply the inverse of the coefficient matrix by both sides of the equation. This is ultimately what we're going to do. We're going to do this by calculator. Okay? But this is what it looks like on paper for what we're actually doing here. We're going to multiply both sides by the inverse of the coefficient matrix. Okay? Now, <clears throat> we might ask, why does this work? Well, if I multiply an inverse times the original matrix, okay, remember what that gives me. That gives me the identity matrix. times x, y, z, if you will. Okay, and so why does that work? Well, ultimately, remember, the identity matrix is really just 1. Okay, so it's no different than having a 1 out in front of that. So that's why when we get done, our answer is going to be x, y, z equals blank, 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 whatever it may be. Okay, that's why it works. Okay, so with that said, <clears throat> let's go ahead and go to work here. We need to find the inverse of the coefficient matrix. So again, it's a calculator problem. So we'll go matrix, do the math, or excuse me, names. We want to take uh, A, and we want to do the inverse. Remember, the inverse button is uh, <coughs> the same button as matrix. And I'm going to go ahead and store that, because I'm going to use that matrix for to find my answer. So I'm going to store that. I'm going to store it in the C matrix. Okay. So I'm going to do A inverse. I'm going to store it in C. All right, and there it is. It's not very pretty. Notice that we could do math frac here and put it in fraction form. We don't really need to at this point, but we could if it uh, if any of those turn out to be fractions, it would change it. Okay, remember ultimately what do we need to do here? We need to multiply <coughs> that matrix by the original, which we don't really need to do because it's just one. But our ultimately our answer is going to be that matrix we just found times the answer matrix. Okay, so that means that I'm going to go matrix C times matrix B, because that's our answer matrix. So matrix C times matrix B. Okay, and I can store it if I want to, otherwise I can just see the answer on my screen. <clears throat> and we can see the answer there. But if we <clears throat> do math frac, okay, we get it as follows. Okay. 
Alright. Questions so far? Or store is the store button right under recall here. Okay, just hit store and then pick a different matrix to choose. Okay. All right, questions on that process? Okay. Let's go ahead and see that process one more time.